Here I've got a nice symmetric system of equations from the 2017 El Salvador Math Olympiad. So our goal is to find all real numbers x, y, and z, satisfying 1 over x plus y plus z equals 3, x plus 1 over y plus z equals 3, and finally x plus y plus 1 over z equals 3. Now, before we maybe jump into a general solution, I'd like to first note that there's a really trivial solution, which is x equals y equals z equals 1. And sometimes when you see problems like this, the trivial solution is the only solution. But I think this is a nice problem because we'll get some other non-trivial solutions to this. So let's jump into our solution. So we're gonna start by taking these two equations and clearing the denominators. We'll multiply the first equation by x and the second equation by y. That will yield the two new equations, one plus xy plus xz equals three x. That's the first equation multiplied by x. And then the second equation multiplied by y will give us one plus xy plus yz equals three y, where I've reordered that second equation after multiplying. But this is good news because there are a lot of like terms among these equations, the one and the x, y. So that gives us some motivation for grouping this entire second equation and subtracting it from the first equation. So that'll leave us with x, z minus y, z equals 3x minus 3y. Now we can factor, leaving us with z times x minus y equals three times x minus y. And that's gonna split naturally into two cases which we will investigate separately. So the first case is what happens if x is not equal to y. So if x is not equal to y, we can cancel this x minus y from both sides of the equation, and that tells us that z is equal to three. So like I said, this will be the first case that we investigate. And then the second case is what happens if x equals y. But notice if we've got x equal to y, we can't say anything about z at the moment. And that's because we just have zero equals zero. So z is really free to be anything. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna attack this one first and let's see what we get from that. Okay. So looking over here, we have two main equations that we might wanna work with. And that's because in the case when z equals three, these two equations really tell us the same information. Okay, so plugging in z equals three to this guy right here, we see that x plus one over x, or sorry, one over y equals zero, which means x equals negative one over y, or y equals negative one over x. That's because there's some nice symmetry in this equation right here. Okay, and then plugging z equals three over here, we see that we get x plus y plus one over three equals three. So something like that. Okay, so now let's take these two equations and combine them so that we can solve for x and y. Okay, so we'll do that over here. So I'll start maybe by multiplying this equation by three. So that'll leave us with three x plus three times y. But let's recall that y is negative one over x. So this is really three over x and this plus changes to a minus. Okay, so that's just substituting this in while multiplying by three, and then we'll have plus one equals nine. So something that looks like that. But now let's notice we can move this around, leaving us with all of this is equal to eight. So we have three x minus three over x equals eight. That really motivates us to further multiply this by x to kill the denominator, leaving us with 3x squared minus 3 equals 8x, which can be rewritten as 3x squared minus 8x minus 3 equals 0. But now using the quadratic formula, we'll have x equals 8 plus minus the square root of 8 squared, that's 64, minus 4 times a times c, that's plus 36, over 2 times a, that is 6. 
Now, 64 plus 36 is 100. The square root of 100 is 10. So this is shaping up quite nicely. We have this is 8 plus minus 10 over 6. So that's going to give us 18 over 6, or let's see, negative 2 over 6, which is negative 1 over 3. Okay, well, let's notice 18 over 6 is equal to 3. So actually, this is kind of a symmetric solution here. We have x equals 3, which means y equals negative 1 over 3, or we have x equals negative 1 over 3, which means y equals 3. And this is all built off of the case when z was equal to 3. And while we're at it, we should point out that we get some symmetric solutions here as well, which I'll let you fill in. So there'll be a case when z is negative 1 third, and then x and y are both 3, to kind of couple with this right here. So we get one more symmetric solution out of this, which let's write that down again. So we'll have x equals y equals 3, and then z equals negative 1 third. So now notice that just comes from kind of looking at the symmetry of these two solutions along with this z equals 3. We want to also check that it comes from this place right here where x is equal to y. Okay, so let's clean up the board and then we'll go down this path. So we just finished working out this case when x was not equal to y and thus z was equal to 3. Now we're ready to look at the case when x is equal to y. So let's notice that that will give us a system of equations right here. Maybe we'll use these last two equations. So we'll have x plus 1 over x plus z equals 3. And then we'll have x plus x plus 1 over z equals 3. Okay, but now notice this tells us that 1 over z equals, let's see, it's going to be 3 minus 2x, which tells us that z is equal to, let's see, it'll be 1 over 3 minus 2x. And you might be worried about dividing by that, but it's pretty clear that this 1 over z term is not 0. So since this 1 over z term is not 0, this right-hand side is not 0, so we're allowed to put it in the denominator. Okay, so now that we've got this value for z, let's maybe plug that right here and see what equation we get out of that. So we'll have x plus 1 over x plus 1 over 3 minus 2x equals 3. Now we probably want to cancel denominators. So we can do that by multiplying this entire thing by 3 minus 2x times x. Those are the two denominators that are present there. So that'll leave us with x squared times 3 minus 2x for this first term, and then plus 3 minus 2x for this second term, and then plus x for this third term, and then finally on the right-hand side we'll have 3x times 3 minus 2x. Now we need to expand some things out. So let's see, we'll have minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 3 plus x equals, let's see, minus 6x squared plus 9x. Now let's move everything around. So let's maybe move this stuff over to the other side of the equation while simplifying a little bit. So we'll have minus 2x cubed. Then let's see what our x squared term will be. So adding this negative 6x squared, we'll have a plus 9x squared. And then we'll have a minus 2x plus x, that'll be minus 1x. And then subtracting 9x, we'll have minus 10x. And then finally, plus 3 equals 0. Now, it's probably advantageous to change the sign, multiply this whole thing by negative 1, leaving us with 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 10x minus 3 equals 0. And now, this is a cubic. Cubics are generally hard to solve but hopefully there's a rational root that would help us out. And there is a rational root, and that will occur at, let's see, x equals 1. 
So notice if x is equal to 1, then we have 12 adding up from this, minus 12 from that, and so that'll give us a 0. So that means we should be able to factor an x minus 1 out of this. So let's see what will be left after we do that. Well, we know the term has to start with 2x squared in order to achieve this 2x cubed, and it's got to finish with a plus 3. So playing around with the middle a little bit, we'll see that a minus 7x is what works. So let's just check that a little bit. So the x squared term will come from two places. It'll be x times negative 7x, that's negative 7x squared, and then negative 1 times 2x squared, that'll be minus 9x squared. So that works out. Let's check out the linear term. So we'll have x times 3, that'll be 3x, negative 1 times negative 7x, that'll be plus 7x, that adds up to 10x. So we're good to go there as well. Okay, so now we'd like to look at this remaining quadratic polynomial. Maybe that thing factors. So let's see. If it factors, it factors like 2x with something and then x with something. And then we'll need a minus sign in both of these spots to achieve a minus here and a plus here. Then let's see what might go in the other bit. So maybe we could have a 3 here. So that'll give us negative 6x. And then we could have a minus 1 here. That'll give us negative 7x. So that tells us we have three possibilities for x. We have x equals 1, x equals 3, or x equals 1 half. And now let's notice this x equals 1 case corresponds to this that we had over here, which was kind of our trivial solution. This x equals 3 case corresponds to that one that we guessed about from the symmetric properties of this solution. So all we need to check now is the x equals half case. So notice it's not only x equals half, but it's also y equals 1 half. So we've got x equals 1 half and y equals 1 half. And maybe I'll leave it to you to check if this gives us a solution of, as well. So if we have x is a half and y is a half, tell us what we get for z. And that's a good place to stop.